Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson again, and we're going to continue our studies. And this time we are reviewing for the grade 7 New York State math exam. So here's our show number one, and I hope to make other shows for you to help you with the 2018 test. So I'm taking questions from the 2017 exam. Release questions. All right, if you need help with your homework, there's always dial a teacher homework help hotline at 212-777-3380 Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Give them a call. Don't forget to watch our YouTube videos if you remember. And my name is Dan Robinson. And please subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up if you like our videos. There you'll see my smiley face there. You can also tweet us at DRobMath1. And look for our new release, Math Prep 18. Very good movie. I think you'll like it. Check out the other math preps that we also make. Also check out our show, Math Time, on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m on Optimum Cablevision uh, channel 15 every Tuesday. All right, let's get going. Winston needs at least 80 signatures from students in his school before he can run for class president. All right, so he needs at least 80 signatures. Okay, that's important. He has 23 signatures already. He and two of his friends plan to get the remaining signatures during lunch. If each person gets the same number of signatures, which inequality can Winston use to determine the minimum number of signatures each person should get so he can run for the class president? All right. So remember, we got to do a little text coding. So let's underline what's important. So I remember the word at least in class. And when they said at least, we always use the symbol greater than, and it could be or equal to, because he can get at least 80 signatures, and that's what they're looking for. 80 would be the least amount he can get, but if he gets more than 80, that's great. And so I'm going to automatically eliminate choice D, B, as well as D, because they're saying, uh, those are less than. He can't get less than 80 signatures, and over here is less than 23 signatures. I don't know why. That's there. So it's going to be either A or C. Now, uh, and he needs at least 80 signatures. So I don't know why they would have 23 signatures there. He needs more, more than 80. So I would go with C automatically as my choice. But let's go through it just to see. So, um, Let's see, he has 23 signatures already. So if he has 80 signatures to get, and he already has 23, if I subtract them from each other, that'll give me 57 signature that he needs. So he needs 57 signatures. Now, if we remember solving equations, we would subtract the number here, and here, if I subtract, 23 minus 80, that's not going to give me the same thing as 80 minus 23. So this would give me a negative 57. So I know A is also wrong. So here's where I, where I would have my 23 minus from 80, and that would give me the 57 that I need. So, but let me just continue a little bit more. So Winston and two of his friends, uh, that's a total of three people plan to get the remaining signatures during lunch. So if, if, if the three of them are going to get signatures during lunch, so I'm just going to say three times what number should they get to get the 57? That's the least amount they would need. So I would divide that by three, divide that by three, and that's it if I wanted to solve the problem. But I'm not going to solve the problem because they didn't ask us to solve the problem. They just asked us to write the inequality. So three of his friends, three times something, or three x, plus 23 that he already has, has got to be more than or greater than 
for at least 80 signatures. That's why the choice was choice C. So if you chose choice C, you are in good standing. Let's continue. A seventh grade ELA or English language arts teacher like Ms. Bolden or Ms. Wallach wants to order books for all of the seventh grade classes. He or she wants to determine the favorite type of book among the seventh grade students. Okay, so she wants to know what are the seventh grade students like. So which sample, so they're taking a group of people at random, I hope, would be the most appropriate for this survey. So let's look at our choices. A, seven girls from each of his classes. Well, if they chose seven girls from the classes, that doesn't represent the whole seventh grade. So you want to, if they're picking books for the the seventh grade, so the favorite type of books among the seventh grade students, you would think they would ask seventh grade students. So A is not good because they don't ask enough people. So I'm going to get rid of A because they only have seven girls and um, they all might be friends or something and pick the same book and all the seventh graders don't have a good vote. B says every fifth student in the seventh grade. Hmm, okay, every fifth student, so I guess every random five students out of the whole seventh grade, so they are asking the seventh grade, that's good. And every fifth student, so that does show some randomness, so B looks like a good choice. But let's keep reading. One out of seven students in, the, in his middle school. Well, one out of seven students, that's good, that's random, but in the middle school, I have a problem with that because in the middle school, you may have uh, eighth graders and sixth graders and maybe even fifth graders who are looking to respond to that ELA question and he's, and he's trying to pick for the seventh grade. So this is the problem that I have here because it's too many other grades that are not uh, in responding to the question for the seventh grade. So we don't want to hear from eighth graders, unfortunately, or the sixth graders or fifth. All right, let's, so I'm going to cross out C, all of the boys in, all of the boys, what about the girls? In one of his seventh grade classes. Well, he's only asking one class in the seventh grade. And what about the other class? And then he's just asking the boys, and the boys might just pick a book that only they like, like uh, something on basketball or baseball or sports. So that's not good. So I'm going to go with choice B. So if you chose B, let's see. You got it. All right. Check your understanding. If you understand what's going on so far, great. If you're not sure, rewatch the video. Check out what I did. Write down your questions and bring them in and we'll answer them. Okay. Here's my last question for today. Hallam Hardware creates flyers to advertise a sale on a certain type of carpet. A portion of the flyer is shown below. So here's a flyer. So the area and square feet of the carpet, and that's how much it costs in dollars. All right, now they have a little bit more down here. Gullen Floors advertises the same type of carpet at a cost of 10% less per square foot. Hmm. So there's a discount at the other other place. So there's a 10% discount. So 10% less than Hallam than Hallam hardware. So then these guys so these guys are going to be a little bit lower by 10%. All right. Determine the cost of 700 square feet of carpet if it is bought from Gullen Carpet. All right, so they want us to figure out the cost of 700 square feet of carpet if it's bought from Gullen Carpet. Well, I'm curious what's the cost of, <clears throat> excuse me, carpet for Hallam. So let's look at Hallam, H. Hallam. 
they have seven hundred and fifty dollars for the cost of five hundred square feet. Now, let me get my calculator figure out what's going to cost for for one square foot. So let me get a calculator. And I'm sorry for the brief coughing spell there. 750. And I'm going to divide by 500. See how much that costs. 150. So a dollar fifty per per square foot. So now, hmm, this didn't drag over. There we go. So it's going to cost a dollar fifty for one square foot of carpet. Um, they want to know how much is the cost of seven hundred uh, for a gallon. So we better find out the cost of seven hundred for Hallam. So let me get my calculator back. Let me write times. So it's going to take that answer of a dollar fifty, multiply it by seven hundred, because I just found the unit rate, and it's going to cost them one thousand fifty dollars for seven hundred. So that's Hallam's cost for seven hundred. All right, let's get to Gullen. So Gullen. He's got a discount of 10% less per square foot. So wait a minute. So I did a, remember doing a video where I used the formula for discount. T is equal to the price times 1 minus the rate. And that'll give us the total cost for uh, with a discount. So we're going to find the total cost for one square foot. So I want one square foot. What would be the price from of one square foot for Hallen, which is a dollar fifty? And the reason why I'm using a dollar fifty and not ten fifty is because dollar fifty is the cost of one. If you remember, we divided seven hundred fifty by five hundred to find the cost of one. So we now know the cost of one. So now, 1 minus the rate of 10%, that's the discount rate. Now, we'll be able to figure out how much it costs for one square foot of carpet. So, let's get our calculator back, clear this out. And speaking of calculator, let me go into mode just to check if I did what I should do. Because I noticed uh, a couple things in the state test the other day so if you check out my video on using a calculator I'm gonna first go to what's called math print and put my calculator in math print so I can get those nice looking fractions let me go down and speaking of fractions I see manual simplification is there so let me go to auto simplification and put that on so that way it can simplify if I end up with a fraction. So let's second quit. So, all right, let's type it in. 1.50 times, parenthesis, 1 minus 10 per second. Close that. And the total cost would be $1.35. <clears throat> Excuse me. For one square foot. So, since it's a dollar thirty-five for one square foot, they're cheaper than Hallam, because Hallam has a dollar fifty for, and a dollar thirty-five as compared to a dollar fifty. And sorry for the coughing spell again. So Hallam is a little higher by 15 cents than Gullen, and they said Gullen was cheaper, but they want to know what is the cost of 700 feet, square feet of carpet from Gullen. So let me get my calculator back one more time and multiply that answer I got by 700, and that'll give me the cost 
of 700 square feet. So it's going to cost me $945 for 700 square feet of carpet. And I save money if I go to Gowen. So the answer is $945. That was a good question. It had a lot of stuff in it, a lot of meat in it. So make sure you understand what's going on. If you need help, write down your questions, bring them in tomorrow. There's always also the homework help hotline at 212-777-3380 from Monday through Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time, 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cablevision, Channel 15. Remember to check out our study videos. Uh, look for our latest math release video, Math Prep 18. And my channel name is Dan Robinson. You see my little smiley face there. And please subscribe to our channel. And you can tweet me at DRobMath1. So next time we meet, I'll pick up with this question here. So take a look at it. And we'll start right there next time. So good luck on your test. I hope you do well. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Bye.